So I would like to welcome our very first speaker, and this is Susanna Sheed. And Susanna is a state member of parliament for Shepparton District, Victoria. So Susanna, when you're ready, thank you. Huge welcome to you. Thank you for joining us and over to you. Thank you so much, Margaret. And welcome to everybody who is joining in today. This is a fantastic event and uh, one that Rashidi has been pursuing year after year. And I think it creates a real depth and understanding that um, you know, perhaps here in Shepparton we didn't have, but it's really going out to so many people in so many places. So um, I think we all need to note in the topic of the conference that resilience has probably been the most heard word over the last couple of years. And uh, um, the pandemic has really brought that about because if ever we needed re resilience, I think people have, um, recognise that that is a quality that is, is greatly in need. And of course, people have shown it in such huge amounts um, as we struggle through what has been an incredibly difficult time across the world and um, here in Australia, and perhaps more so in Australia right now, as we face our own challenges with COVID-19. Um, I'm asked to talk about making a difference in that regional sense. And I think um, for all people, who are aspiring to leadership, who think about leadership, who want to change something, who have maybe one goal or many goals in relation to change, um, I want to tell you that it's possible to do it and that you should be absolutely optimistic about it. And to do that, I'll just share shortly a little bit of my journey. I, um, I grew up in regional New South Wales on a farm. I eventually, um, I studied law and did a master's of law and eventually settled in Shepparton where I've been for, you know, over 35 years and close to 40. So um, this is my home and the, the bigger region has always been my home. The, um, the, the thing that, that has perhaps always influenced my life was the fact that my parents were very involved in their small community, involved in organisations and, you know, helping people in the community um, and very much in, um, you know, things like the Country Women's Association and local agricultural leadership groups. So for me, it was always just a natural thing to do as I um, became an adult and lived in this community for many years to be a part of the community and to do my bit and to be involved in a whole range of things. So, um, I mean, just, and, and the, probably the most recent example of that before I went into politics was um, chairing the Fairly Leadership Foundation, um, not the, the, uh, the, the Golden Valley Community Leadership Program um, that the, the Fairly Leadership Foundation had established um, in the 1990s. And that's been an incredible, organisation that has built leadership and capacity across our region for so long and is really widely supported by so many um, in our community and more broadly through philanthropy. So, so it really is important to have, um, to have people outside your community who support you and help you and, and the growth of that organisation has had, an, had amazing impacts on our community. So my story was I was a lawyer here in Shepparton for many, many years practicing generally and being involved in a range of community organizations and I guess areas of interest to me that included environmental water policy, um, organizations governing water issues and so forth. So, um, so in, two, in October, 2014, it, it became very clear to me that we, um, were a very safe seat in political terms. We'd had the National Party in power for um, over, um, well, they had represented this community for over 47 years. And there was a sense in which, um, in my view, parties often feel they own a seat. And it was, it was very much a case of a whole lot of things that Shepparton needed that we weren't getting. And the community was very loud about that. We needed better rail services. We needed... <clears throat> the redevelopment of the hospital, we needed better educational outcomes for our kids because they were clearly below the state average and there was nothing being done to, um, to really 
achieve a big change and a big investment. So they're, they're some of the things that, that were really concerning to the community. So I stood as an independent because I regard the party, um, my community as being my party and that is who you listen to. And it was very clear and very loud at that time that these were the things that were major issues in our, in our community. So um, I stood for election on a 29 day campaign with really strong community support. And um, I won that election and then I subsequently uh, won the following election with an increased majority. So I've had the great privilege of representing this Shepherd and District in the State Parliament of Victoria now for seven years. And of course, there's another election at the end of next year because here in Victoria, we have fixed four year terms. We don't forever wonder when the next election will be as they do at a federal level. So I think um, being part of your community is a really important component of who you are and what you do. And that's, um, that to me, um, I think was part of my success when I stood to get elected. You, people need to vote for you. And that, um, that uh, depth of involvement in the community and many years of being in a community obviously gives you, um, gives people confidence in you. So it's one of the things that I think is important when you think about making a difference. You, you do need to be involved, and that starts from a very young age, being involved in organisations, community organisations, whatever it might be that, th that is your area of interest, and that was certainly a component of the whole of, the whole of my life before I went into politics. Perhaps most importantly um, for me, education has been the biggest issue. Because I come from a regional area and I grew up on a farm and it was distant from anywhere, and educational opportunities were more difficult. I started out doing um, what we called correspondence, which is really just homeschooling for my first couple of years because uh, we were on a farm where there was no school within any distance that was accessible. But after moving closer to a town, I started attending school in, region, in a regional community. But the, the reality is that um, regional communities have always been underdone when it comes to education. And you just have to read any Auditor General's report or any of the studies that have been done on it. And it, uh, it is often simply because we don't get heard the way we should get heard and we don't get the investment in education. And there's a whole range of things around our community that, that will lead people not necessarily wanting to come and be in a regional area. So to be a successful regional area, you need to be able to attract and recruit people at every level. You need doctors, you need teachers, you need agricultural scientists, all these, all these things, university lecturers. You, you can think of any number of people who you need in your community. And for people to come to a community, they, they want to know that their kids can get a good education. They want to know that they can get decent medical assistance when they need it. And they want accessibility. And um, in a way, th those were three very challenging things for this region. And we've, we've now seen almost a billion dollars worth of investment in, in the hospital in rail that's underway at the moment. Um, a massive investment in the development of the new senior secondary, the, the new secondary college, Greater Shepherd and Secondary College that will open next year. And of course, the Marupna um, Early Children Centre. So these things are really important when it comes to attracting people to come to your region to do the work that needs to be done. But it's also really important to develop within your own community um, the people who will get educated and give them the opportunities and they will then also become leaders in our community. And we've seen that uh, with La Trobe University and the courses that they offer. So making a difference, um, making a difference to me is very practical. Um, I think it, it is about actually getting up and doing something. And, uh, and when I ran that first campaign, it was called Stand Up Shepherd and It's Our Turn. And that was uh, that really resonated for me very strongly what we needed at that time. There's so many big issues now around um, around the world, and I think we are all very focused much more now um, beyond our own community um, across Australia and indeed across the world, and especially 
here in Shepparton, I, th I think we, our awareness of what is happening in other parts of the world is so great because we have such a multicultural community. And uh, I think our heart goes out to everyone in our community with their connections uh, with Afghanistan at the moment. It's truly been a horrific time for people to see what has happened in that country and to know that here in Shepparton we have many people, many families who have family back there who are, are feeling that awful pain and I certainly empathise with um, all our, our Afghani community. But it's not, um, it's not limited to that. We see so many people who come here as refugees from countries where they are um, they're, they're effectively unable to go back for political or other reasons that um, would put them at risk if they did. So we have a community that's quite different for a regional community um, in that it is such a multicultural community and we've always worked hard to celebrate that and we talk about that a lot, but it is really important that we do things about it as well. And we have all sorts of events and we have food festivals and we, we do many things to um, try and, you know, integrate in, in among each community and get to know each other better. But uh, dare I say that the most important thing you can do is invite a family, another family to your family and have a meal together. I think fundamentally that is what brings people together. That's what brings understanding. And um, it's something I think we need to do more in Shepparton, actually. Um, it's, um, we, we've had uh, Fiona Smolinars here in Shepparton doing a lot of work in relation to recruitment and helping people settle in. And just recently, um, a young woman who's now working at Headspace moved in next door to me. And because of COVID, I haven't been able to have her to dinner yet, but we keep um, passing herbs over the fence to each other and hope that one day we'll share a meal together because these are things that, that are really fundamental. They're personal, but they make such a difference to the bigger picture and to how we operate as a community. So that's something I would urge you, you all to think about. I know that um, on... When it comes to the big picture, um, we look at the world, we look at what's happened in the United States over the last 12 months, the, the incredible threats to democracy that are in existence. And I think it's really important that we, um, that we look closely at those sorts of issues because they are, they are really fundamental to the nature of how we all operate in our country. And, we see many failed states around the world. We saw the challenge. We saw the, you know, the the attempt to take over the Capitol building in Washington in January. Um, we've seen many things that are really quite frightening. We have more repressive regimes in the world than ever before. We live in one of the luckiest countries in the world, and it is our job to make sure that we stay that way, that we share it, and that we take a leadership role. Um, Margaret, how much longer do I have? I think we will wind you up in, in like in one I, minute. If I, I, I had a sense of moving around. Yep. Please, spin, you know, please wind up. Yeah, okay. So look, just oh, one more thing I'd yes, like to say. The, yeah. the most fundamental challenge uh, that we all have is climate change. Mm -hmm. And the latest IPCC report you know, indicated that it left no doubt. Um, we can't be apologists for, for, what, for what is happening. Um, young people and old people and every, everyone in between really, but I see strong leadership among many of the older people in the world and I see it among young people and together we have to find a way to overcome and to bring back into control the warming of the planet because it is absolutely the most critical issue that we have now and we have to hold governments accountable. We have to be personally active. We have to be active within our organizations and we really have to do everything we can. So I see a lot of reason to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, we've been through a really tough 18 months, but there's a sense in which with the fact that we've got a vaccine, we got one and we got many as it turns out and it's available and it's free. And I think we can all see a light at the end of the tunnel to some degree in terms of COVID, but we'll always be faced with big issues. And it's those of us, those of you who are here today because you're taking an interest in this topic 
who can change the world, whether it's local, whether it's bigger, or whether it's huge. So best of luck to all of you. Oh, Susanna, thank you. Thank you. That is a really, really wonderful opening for our um, Youth Summit this morning. Um, look, it's not often we, we all get a chance to, to just meet a state MP in this manner and, and have this kind of conversational um, you know, experience. So thank you. We're going to go into breakout rooms, Susanna, and um, we're going to invite people to chat about what, you know, the points you have just raised, and you've raised many. So in your breakout room, I want you to think, what were some of the key things Susanna was raising? And she certainly, um, she said, making a difference is very practical. And in her own story, you can see in here, how many different action points she took to make change and particularly for Shepparton um, and, and a lot around education. So seeing education as vitally important. But what I want you to think about is sometimes we get so overwhelmed with these big issues like climate change or the oppression you were referring to, you know, across the world, Susanna. And what I really admire about this is when you chunk big problems, you chunk them down to bite size like this. And this is talking about working effectively in your region actually has a ripple effect across the country and that has a ripple effect across the world. So I want to thank you for what you've done in Shep. My father was born just out of Shepparton in a little town called Zerust. <laughs> so we're going to go into breakout rooms. Now you'll find yourselves in with a mixture of people. Um, you need to rapidly start chatting away. You've probably only got about five minutes and one of you needs to sort of take on that role of, you know, welcoming everybody and getting everybody um, started talking. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. We we had a wonderful discussion. Um, now, is Susanna is Susanna still with us? She I am. You are. Yes. I, I can't see you there, but great. Are we able to bring? Ah, there you go. Thank you, Victor. Susanna, we had a huge discussion about things that you raised. So you obviously inspired people. I'm going to invite. Have we got um, Tahira, Tahira Lavara? And yes. who has a question for you, Susanna? Um, so my question for you is how hard has it been being an MP in Shepparton during our COVID lockdowns? And what have you had, um, what has it meant for you have having to do? So what have you had to do? Um, look, I have to say it's probably been, it's been an incredibly busy time and it's been, such a strange time because it's all happening in my house to some degree. You know, the, the thing that's really strange about COVID is that we're so locked in. I mean, I've just come back from Parliament last night. So um, I'm glad that Parliament's able to function again and we'll be going to Parliament a lot for the rest of the year. And that's a great opportunity to talk about your community. But I think when um, I'm, I'm thinking of just the last three weeks, really, and the and three or four weeks, you know, since day one when we had that outbreak, the first case, and then we were 17 by the end of the day, and then, of course, half the city was shut down, and and the challenges that that presented, um, I think in Shepherd and everyone played a part, and um, my part as a state representative is to make sure that I can access. Uh, resources from the state government to um, help deal with the issues we were having and uh, there were people working on the ground but bearing in mind that half the volunteers were locked down half you know so many of the people who would normally be um, leaders and organizers and volunteers they were out of action including people who ran the check the checkouts at the supermarket and so the challenges were huge and and really it what I observed was all those who were left came in. Um, they 
organised, they did whatever they could to help the community. And at a state level, it was my job to get the emergency assistance we needed. Um, the army came in, the emergency management Victoria came in and put a person in to help with organisation, um, organising some more food relief from Melbourne. And, um, but on the ground, it was just very much this community um, doing for the rest of the community. And I have to say, I think Shepparton's really stood out as an example and, and they've been widely praised Shepparton for the way they did it. And even the Prime Minister beamed in on Monday morning to congratulate you know, community, the community more generally for, for what they'd been able to do, which was really lovely. Wow, T T do you have one more question? Um, yeah, so I'm interested in politics. If I were wanting to become a state MP, what should I do to start heading towards that path? Um, so, um, look, people go about getting into politics in many ways, but I've never wanted to join a political party. I've never been a part of a political party. One way, of course, is to join a political party and work hard and be active and, and involved. And many people who um, become politicians have come up through the ranks of the parties. So that's one way. Um, the other, and I think this probably reflects rural communities a bit more, is, is being well known and involved in your community, being a leader in your community. So, I mean, I would say take all the leadership opportunities that are ever offered to you because you learn so much. I mean, I have never been to a conference where I didn't come away knowing that I'd learnt something, even if I thought overall it was awful. And I've been to a few awful ones, but, but generally speaking, you will always learn something. So, you know, we've, we've got our local leadership program. There's the um, Leadership Victoria, the statewide one. These things are really great for growing your perspective of the state and the country and, and, ev and even the world. And so take those opportunities, be involved. And, and, and that means... Um, you know, it's not just a, hey, look at me, I'm a leader. It's actually being in there and doing stuff, you know, being um, being the secretary, being the treasurer, um, fronting up and handing out parcels if things get tough, you know, it's, it's all of that stuff. So that will, that gives you the credibility in your community and also you learn so much from it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tahira. Thank you for your questions. And I know in the breakout rooms, our breakout room discussion was wonderful about political oppression, about fear of diversity, and then discovering diversity was magnificent. Um, talking about Australia and we're all locked down, and yet we are one of the most democratic uh, countries in the world and still have this freedom even in lockdown. So thanks to you both. Um, Ali's put a question in the chat and I don't want you to answer this Susanna because we're going to keep moving but I think it's a great question for all of us to consider. How do we know when to take the initiative and that first move and what do we do when we don't get any support or help when we need it and how can we remain as dedicated and committed to the cause that we'll be aiming to achieve. I want everybody to, that's not just for our, our politicians to consider, that's Nelson Mandela would say, right there, Ali, you have raised something each and every one of us needs to consider. So well done. Susanna, thank you so much. Thank Can you. we all put our virtual clapping hands up there for Susanna? And we will be, <laughs> and we will keep <laughs> moving. And all the best for Shepparton yeah. and the wonderful work that you're doing, Susanna. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed that excerpt, um, our discussion with Susanna Sheed at the 2021 Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit. Um, there's lots more materials, the vibrant optimism of the students and the other speakers. So if you go to the Centre for Optimism website, um, there are pages devoted to the Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit with videos, quotable quotes and subtranscripts. Uh, and you're always welcome to touch base with us at the Centre for Optimism um, to see if there's some materials you'd like to access for the Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit 
or whether you'd like to be a part of the 2022 Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit.